So once dad had passed, um, we, we went about planning, not necessarily a funeral. It was, we called it a celebration of life. It was just a celebration of him. He didn't want a traditional funeral. We weren't, you know, a religious family where it had to happen in a church. But one of the things that was really important to us because of the who dad was, was to have something where we could have as many people attend as possible. And wherever we were with restrictions in April and May when he passed, uh, we just weren't there. It wasn't, we didn't, we, you know, we didn't want 10 of our closest friends to come and, and be sad with us because that wasn't what it was about. It was about celebrating who he was and the long life he had lived. He, he wasn't, you know, very old, I would say. He was 75 or just 74 when he passed. But he lived dozens of lives in those 74 <laughs> years. So there was a whole cavalcade of characters and, and people that we wanted to make sure could come and celebrate them. So... You know, one of the things is after we wrote the obituary and put it out, we started to see these people come out. We would see posts. We would both, I think, check. There was sort of a message board with the obituary where people would, you know, say their, their wishes or well wishes, whatever, <laughs> condolences. And we would check that and go, oh, who is this person? And then they'd tell a story about, um, oh, when, when your dad was, when John was 17, he jumped on the table in the cafeteria at school and convinced everyone to give him his lunch money so he could travel to Montreal for the weekend. <laughs> like, I never heard that story. That's, yeah. And you go, yeah, yeah, that's absolutely the kind of guy dad was. So it was really important for us to push that. And what we did was we planned a celebration for uh, the summertime, I think in August. End of August. End yeah. of August, where we could do it outside safely. We could have as many people safely as we could. And we just had a party. Like he was very much a, a party person. He was always the life of a party. Um, so we, we had to celebrate him in that way. So that's how we went about honoring him, honoring it for ourselves and honoring it for his friends. Because uh, again, it's important to have people also come and be connected to him too. Like obviously when a, a close loved one passes, you're, you're sort of insular in a bubble. You do this for you and for them. But he had an effect on people wide ranging so we kind of owed it to, to everyone is to bring yeah. people together and it just it was a matter of it didn't have it didn't have to happen right away there wasn't any importance on a time mm -hmm. um he was cremated you know, if we didn't have to have a you know a, a, a we didn't have to bury him so we just pushed it till it made sense and one of the things that that we did actually that aiden did um that kind of brought all that together was he made a video and John had, in his younger days, been an actor. And there were clips that, that we found that, that existed. And then um, all of uh, Aiden's childhood, um, I was the one, ironically, I was the one behind the camera um, filming. And we had tons and tons of video of Aiden and John. And then as Aiden became a filmmaker, John did some volunteer acting for him. So there were clips from his, his from recent, recent times. So Aiden made this beautiful video that brought all of that together and really, I think, celebrated who John was. And, and anybody looking at it felt like, yeah, that, that's John Kennedy, that's JFK, the name that he had for himself. <laughs> Yeah. So, so that, that I think, you know, it really um, gave us an opportunity to bring our family and friends together and then have this, this focus, this video that uh, tied it all in. And, and, you know, I still look at it, makes me sad, mm -hmm. makes me cry, but it also makes me feel like he's right there with me. And I, I watch it often. <laughs>